So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get started in making your very first WordPress website. So working with WordPress is pretty awesome because you can actually get started for free. It's not even a free trial. You can literally make your entire site for free before choosing to actually make it go live and getting a membership. So you can use all the time you need to perfect the site before having to spend any money out of pocket. And honestly, even if you don't want to spend any money, you can actually launch your site um, whilst keeping the name WordPress as part of the domain. But yeah, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can get started making your very first website. So just open up any browser and go to wordpress.com and then click on start your website. Once you're here, just go ahead and type in your email address, pick a username, and then give yourself a good password. Once you've selected an email, password, and username, it's going to prompt you to pick a domain that you would like to select. So just go ahead and type in the domain name of your choice. So for this example, we're going to be making a basic, kind of like a resume style website where it's going to show just information about ourselves. It'll be kind of just an introduction about who we are. So I'm going to call this about me as a person. Very, very fantastic domain name right there. Um, it's going to basically ask us to select one of these, but we're just going to pick the free one for now. And then later down the line, you can pick a real domain with a .com or .anything extension and select that. It's going to prompt us to choose a plan, but like I mentioned, we don't have to do this. Just go up here and click on start with a free site. So once that's finished loading, we'll be introduced to our home screen for WordPress. So this is basically the back end where we have access to all the settings and where we're going to be making everything for our website. So you'll notice right here, it's asking us to just select a name, but we can do that later on. We can also update your homepage, confirm your email address, which you should definitely do. Just in case you ever forget your password, you can go ahead and update it. We can customize our site menu, try the WordPress app and just kind of see your statistics and analytics via the um, phone application. And then once all that stuff is ready and you've cleaned up and made your website, you can then just go ahead and launch your site to the world and people with an internet connection can actually find the website that you've created. Let me just quickly walk you guys through all of the different options that we have access to on the left hand side. So the first thing you'll notice is that this is the home page and it just kind of shows us all of the key pieces of information that are going to be useful for us and it also has a bunch of quick links for things that we can easily just find and do whenever we need them. Um, next you'll find a tab for the statistics and this is actually going to be showing you how many people have visited your website and all of that useful information such as how long people last, um, people who have engaged with your website, and things of that nature. There's also an upgrades portion where you can then go and choose another plan that you want to upgrade your free WordPress account to depending on how active and how many visitors your website gets on a regular basis. And upgrading is also going to give you access to a couple of extra features for example, you can get more storage space. Whenever you upgrade, you can also start accepting payments with PayPal. You can get access to more analytics. You can also add support for videos and just a bunch of other cool stuff. Aside from the upgrades, we also have a posts tab. And if we go ahead and click on that, so on posts, we can actually go ahead and make blog style posts that we can give a name. And then inside of them, we can write any text that we want displayed on that particular post slash page. So you can have multiple drafts and then whenever you want to launch them you can just go ahead and make them public and by publishing them you can also schedule when you want your posts to be available and you can also delete posts that were previously published and move them to your trash. So this is where you make kind of like a blog. Um, on the media tab is where you can actually upload photos that you want to be displayed on your website that you can put in different locations. So you'll notice that by default it gives us this one image and if we want to go ahead and add new pictures that we want displayed on our website we can just click on add new and then we can select the file from the computer that we're on and upload it to our WordPress website. Next we can also go to the pages tab and this is where we can actually make different web pages that our visitors can visit on our website. We can go ahead and just click on add new page and then make a new page for the site. Let's go ahead and skip a couple of these. Um, now let's go to appearance. So appearance is one of the most important tabs out of these options. 
and this is actually going to be where you can select the theme that you want your website to have. So as you can see by default it gave us a theme called Hever uh, and we can actually go ahead and customize this current theme by changing how it looks or we can actually go ahead and scroll through some of these options and select a theme that we feel suits the site that we want to have. So we can just go ahead and look at all these different choices and if one of them stands out as a style that we want our site to have we can go ahead and click on it. So for this site, I want it to be a pretty minimalistic theme, and I think a good one for that uh, might be this baker theme. So let's go ahead and click on it, and then after we click on it, we can go ahead and see a preview of what this theme looks like, as well as a mini description, and we can actually also open a live demo of a website that has this theme, just to get a better idea of what it's going to look like. And then if you are interested in that particular theme, you can just go ahead and click on activate this design. So let's go ahead and do that. And now it's asking if we want to switch the theme that we currently have and preserving the home page or replace the home page with the Baker home page. So whenever you pick a theme by default, WordPress kind of populates it with some filler text. Since we haven't done anything, I'm just going to go ahead and replace it with the filler text for Baker. But if we had already made some changes to our current initial website, then I would select this option so that all of those changes would be preserved. Now we can go ahead and click on Activate Baker. And let's go to Edit Home Page. All right, so now we're on the screen that's actually showing us what our website currently looks like. So they also give you a tutorial, like an interactive tour that just explains all these features on the website. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and skip it, but you can definitely click through that and it's going to guide you through all of these different options. But now if we just scroll through the website that we currently have, this is actually what our home screen looks like. So if someone were to go to the domain name we choose.com, this is going to be the screen that they would see. Um, so we've got a picture here on the left hand side, followed by a profile picture, a name, and a little paragraph just saying who we are. And so the cool thing about WordPress is making changes to this is very very intuitive so for example if I want to go ahead and change my name I can just click on the name Jasmine Baker highlight everything and then type in my name there so I just go ahead and say my name and now if I press enter it'll be updated to whatever I choose to change it to you'll also notice that now we have an option to add a new block and that's because I pressed enter we can actually add something in between my name and this about me paragraph. So right now it's empty. If I choose to add something there, I can. If I leave it blank and we were to preview our site, nothing will show up. Now if I wanna go ahead and make changes to this paragraph, I can go ahead and double click on it. And let's change this to, hello, I am a, and let's give ourselves a good alias like a professional bodybuilder. Make sure that's spelled correctly. And we'll say we live near Portland, Maine. When I'm not posting on Instagram, you can find me shooting weddings and portraits. We can say you can find me lifting all the weights. Cool. So now we've added, we've made changes to the about us paragraph. And you'll also notice that we also have these buttons that we can actually link to our social media platforms. So if you go ahead and just click on one of them, if you were to go ahead and then click on the three little dots, you can remove that social media platform. So if you wanna go ahead and link your social media account to these buttons, you can just click on the social media icon of your choice. And then if you go on the right hand side where it says Instagram label, you can actually give it the link that you want it to redirect the visitor to. So here you would just paste in the link to your Instagram account, and the same goes for TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. If you wanted to actually add a whole new block, you can just go ahead and hover underneath where you wanna have a block, click on the Add Block button, and then you'll be prompted with an option menu of what you wanna add. So we can add another paragraph, we can have a heading, image, quote, list, or gallery, and there's a lot more. So let's imagine we just wanted to add a quote here. 
we can go ahead and click on the quote option. And now we can actually type in the quote that we want to add. So let's say no pain, no gain. Fantastic. And we can also give it a citation. Let's say that this is Arnold's quote. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll just say Arnold S. Cool. So now we've also added a quote to our homepage. If we scroll down, we'll see that this is all we have on our page, and I think that looks good for now. If we want to replace an image that is currently on our website, we can just click on that particular image, click on the replace keyword, and then we can actually select where we want to get an image from. So we can upload an image of our choice. We can use the media library that they provide us with. We can use our Google Photos from your Google account, or we can access Pexels free photos. Click on Pexels free photos and select something that is gym related. So let's say working out. And we're going to search. And let's go ahead and select this image right here. So we'll select that. And then you'll see that it's going to update that image to the image that we have just selected. So that looks good. We can also change the profile image by clicking on there. So now if we click on the profile image, we can replace that just like we did with the image on the left hand side. And for this one, I'm also going to just select a free photo. And we're just going to pick some random person and we'll be them. So we can go ahead and say profile search. And let's go ahead and be um, this guy right here. Even though these two people don't match, no worries, this picture should be good. Fantastic. So now we can click off of there, and we have pretty much updated everything on here. If you want to get rid of this caption, just go ahead and double click. And you can highlight over the text you want to remove in backspace. And if we leave the caption empty, nothing will show up whenever it's previewed. And one more thing too is if you want to change the style of the text, for example in this paragraph if I want to make the word hello um, be bold, I can actually just highlight the word that I want to bold and click the capital B and now it's going to be bolded. If you want to change the color of something, like let's say I want to make Portland, Maine have a different color, I can just highlight it, go on the right hand side where it says color, click on the color black and then change it to the color of my preference. And so this is actually for this particular theme. It keeps the paragraph itself a consistent color. So we can make it black, we can make it white if our background is a different color. Um, and if we go ahead and click on custom color, we can change all of it to a color of our choice. Like, like for example, we can make it all red. So now if we do that, press enter, all of that text is red. And I know this probably isn't the most aesthetically pleasing website, but I just wanna show you guys the functionality as opposed to just the design aspect. Cool. So that looks good. And then once you've settled on a design that you are happy with, you can actually go ahead and click on the preview option on the top right hand corner. And then it's gonna open up a new tab showing you what this website looks like if you were to actually launch it as its own domain. So now this is our website. We've gotten this image on the left hand side, the profile photo followed by our name with a paragraph about ourselves, our social media links and a quote. Fantastic. If you want to get rid of this, you can just click on dismiss, and this is what our site looks like. The way you can see what it looks like on a mobile device is going to be once you preview the site, just go ahead and right click and then click on inspect. When you click on inspect, you'll notice that we get a new toolbar down below on the bottom. And now, if we click on this iPhone icon, this is what our website is going to look like whenever it is on. A mobile device. So we'll get that initial image that was on the left hand side will now become on the top and everything else goes underneath it like this. So always keep in mind that you want to see what your site looks like both on a desktop view as well as on a mobile device just so you can understand how it's going to be presented on both device types. So now let's go back to WordPress 
And if you are happy with the design that you've made, just go ahead and click on update and it's going to be saving all of the changes that you've done. If you click back on the W icon on the top left hand corner, it'll take you back to all of the options that we have. So let's go to all pages. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and add a menu to our website. The easiest way to get to the menu is by going to appearance and then menus from the sub menu uh, choices. So right now we're currently on themes, but if we click on menus down below, it's gonna navigate us over to menus. So now it'll take us to this page and if we click on the menus option, you'll see that we have a primary menu that's given to us by default. And if we click on the arrow for it, we can then add new options that this menu is gonna provide us with. So right now we have home as part of the primary menu, as well as blog. If you wanna go ahead and add another thing to the menu, we can just click on add items. And for example, if you have tags for different pages, you can make a tag be one of the menu options, you can select a category, or you can add one of the posts that we talked about earlier. So for now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is just make posts be another menu option with this example post being what it links us to. So we can just go ahead and click on the plus icon and now you'll see that it's become part of our menu. But what you'll notice is that this menu option is a lot longer than the other two. So if we wanna change the text that this has assigned to it, we can actually just get rid of what it initially says, and then we'll say posts. Hit enter, and now that'll become the new choice. If you wanna save the changes for the menu, just click on the save changes button at the very top. And if you wanna change the order of these options, you can actually just click on one and then drag it to where you wanna go. So if we wanna move posts right after home, now our order becomes home and then posts, followed by blogs, just like that. If you actually want a menu to have a sub menu inside of it, for example, if we hypothetically wanted to make blog be part of the posts menu, we could then click on blog and we're just gonna drag it forward a little bit. So now you'll notice that there's a little space and what this is gonna do is essentially our main menu will have these two options, but then within posts, we can then get to blog. It'll be the sub menu from posts. And so now if we were to go ahead and save this, and then go back to our website preview and refresh the page. And let's go ahead and view it as a desktop application. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the inspect window. You'll notice that we currently don't have any way of navigating to other pages on our site. So that's one thing that we're gonna to have to go ahead and add. And so the way we can do that is by going back and let's get out of the menu option. And to make sure that our menu is actually gonna be visible on our website itself, we have to alter the navigation of our website. Go back to our home option here from the back end of our site. We can go back to edit home page. And so now that we're back on our home page, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus icon on the top left, and we're gonna type in navigation. And so now what you'll see is it's gonna initially just insert the navigation down below at the bottom and we can go ahead and add an existing menu. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna go ahead and select primary, which is the menu we just created previously. And so now we have the home option as well as posts, but obviously we don't want the menu to be down at the bottom. We actually want it to be up at the top. And so the way we can do that is by clicking on the menu and then if you hold these um, six dots right here, we can actually drag it up to where we wanna take it. Just make sure you're holding the entire menu instead of one option, otherwise it's gonna separate it out. So let's make sure we click on the menu container. Let's make sure our order is also correct by dragging this back to the beginning, right before posts. And now what we're gonna do is click on the menu container itself, just here off to the right hand side. Or an easier way of doing this would also be clicking on these three lines on the top left for the list view, where you'll see the navigation option. If we just click on that and then drag it up to the top, right before media and text, 
it's going to move the menu from the bottom of the page to the very top of our website, just like that. So I think that's going to be wrapping it up for this video today. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how WordPress works as a whole. There are obviously a ton more things you can do with WordPress, but I just wanted to give you guys a general overview of some of the things that it has to offer. I wish you guys the best of luck, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.